In this video, I'll share my backup strategy, particularly for photos and videos. I'll show you the hardware and the software I use and rationalize the somewhat unorthodox approach I use for this all important job. Hi, Ray here. To be honest, my backup procedure was pretty haphazard, almost non-existent, until I bought my first Mac, an iMac, in 2007, when I was introduced to Time Machine, which turns backing up your computer into, um, well, a kind of background task. Before that, I'll admit to once losing everything I hadn't stored on floppy disks and CDs. Then, as far as backing up my photos, most of which were uh, from scanned film at that point and I hadn't made any videos, I used a RAID system. I still have one in use today. More on that later. But I soon learned, luckily, before any major problems, and as something worth repeating, RAID is not, in itself, a backup. So to the point, what am I using today? Before I answer that question, I'll anticipate a few other questions by stating right away, I don't use RAID these days other than as a pure Stripe configuration. I don't like to live dangerously, uh, nor a NAS system as the basis for my backups. Quickly, the reason being, A, NAS is expensive and um, B, complicated unless you're an IP expert, C, not immune to ransomware and similar attacks, since it is, as the name indicates, network attached. In fact, NAS systems seem to have been the particular targets of such attacks recently, or at least when I spent weeks last year searching for solutions. Yes, I've heard of prophylactics and solutions to protect a NAS from cyber criminals, but more complexity. So despite the obvious advantages of being able to access files from anywhere with an internet connection and being able to share with a team, not something that I see myself needing to do in the foreseeable future, I checked NAS off my list of options. And as we've established, RAID is not a backup. RAID by itself, which I'd been using for about 10 years, uh, presents other problems. Ones that is something of a technophobe I couldn't get my head around. For instance, I've done a rebuild of uh, this four terabyte system in RAID 5 configuration. Uh, and I thought about using RAID 10 last year. I've also had a rebuild fail. But my overall needs are way beyond four terabytes these days. Now, someone who's more savvy in this area than I might correct me. Uh, and please do so in the comments if you see something I'm missing. But from my research, and it sounds logical, rebuilding, say, a uh, 40 terabyte system after a drive failure is going to take a long time. So I sort of regressed to what might be considered an archaic backup strategy, multiple cloned drives. Now, some viewers may feel the need to bail at this point, but for those who remain curious, stick around and I'll explain the complete procedure, the hardware and software I use, as I said, to accomplish this task. Currently, the main backup drive is an 18 terabyte SanDisk G drive. This is one of the older G drives, um, though it was new last year. It's partitioned with eight terabytes dedicated to Time Machine, backing up the four terabyte storage on my Mac Studio machine. 10 terabytes is reserved for archived video assets, A and B, roll, audio files, etc., and libraries. Now here comes the fun. <laughs> but first, let me um, jump to my Lightroom libraries. I recently needed uh, to expand storage for my still photos to keep most files I need on a daily basis on a single drive, so I decided to buy a four terabyte SSD. Again, after lots of research, I decided to build my own. So I bought a Casus SSD enclosure compatible with Thunderbolt 3 and 4 for about $200 Canadian and a Western Digital Black 4TB NVMe Gen 3 PCLE M2 2280 SSD for about $700 Canadian. And that supports up to 3400 megabytes a second. You can get a Gen 4 now supporting um, up to 7300 megabytes a second for 489 Canadian. Ah. The March of Technology. This is a pretty straightforward DIY job and Acasis made it easy to do by simply um, sliding in the SSD, add heat sinks on either side, snap the lid back into place, and you have yourself a relatively cost-effective external SSD drive. I've been using this for 
a year now with no problems. It does get pretty warm to the touch and I've occasionally left it plugged in overnight and longer with no apparent issues. This is backed up with a cheaper drive, a Western Digital My Passport Ultra, I have lots of these, that I clone with Carbon Copy Cloner. And I can't recommend this app from Bomich Software enough. No affiliation here, it's just what I chose after searching for a solution a few years ago. And I've stayed with it through several iterations, um, each one better than the last. And CCC is what I use to back up all my drives, including Samsung T5 external SSDs, faster T7 now available. I use these when traveling and um, sometimes even edit on them. Again, carbon copy cloner on the MacBook comes in handy to make sure these are cloned ASAP. So back to the desktop. I have this now 10 year old Promise Pegasus R4 that I referred to earlier, consisting of four times one terabyte drives now configured to RAID 0, so it's really just a single 4 terabyte storage unit. And I moved my video masters to this, backed up with other SATA drives. Since I got the Mac Studio last year, I now edit internally on the blazing fast internal 4 terabyte SSD, regularly moving video assets and finished products to the external storage. Most recently, I've added this piece of hardware to my desk, which is admittedly <laughs> getting cluttered, but with technology that really streamlines my work. I forget how I stumbled on the Sabrent Dual Bay docking station, but I'm glad that I did. At first glance, it's really just a plastic uh, enclosure with contacts for 3.5 inch and 2.5 inch SATA HDDs, nothing too fancy, but it seems to do the job well. It'll read and write two drives simultaneously. It's hot swappable. I started out just looking for a simple dock, but the Sabrent comes with the added bonus of a built-in offline cloning function. I really haven't compared a, a real comparison test. I suspect CCC on the Mac would win out. When time isn't of the essence, I could, I guess, use the Sabrent to clone from one 3.5 drive to another. Anyway, I clone these kinds of drives and store some offsite should the unthinkable happen. Now, in case you're wondering, yes, I do use cloud storage for my most precious assets, including all irreplaceable photos. For instance, my archive of vintage images, many that required countless hours of restoration work, images saved for specific print sizes, etc. I use Google's Dropbox and Apple cloud storage with my most irreplaceable stuff in both places. Perhaps it's not the cheapest alternative I really haven't compared in a while. I didn't choose some other options like Backblaze or iDrive because I don't want to wait months for my files to upload. So the plan going forward is when the 10 terabyte partition on the G drive is full, I format it, not before I've cloned the backup. And we start the process over with a fresh drive. As I see it, the advantage to this approach over any kind of RAID system is that when a drive inevitably dies, I just replace it with a new drive and clone completely from one of the existing backups without waiting for a RAID array to rebuild itself. Admittedly, there's still some time to wait until you can breathe easy. As an example, I recently cloned um, 4.6 terabytes from the G drive to a 10 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf drive using CCC, which took exactly five hours 48 minutes to complete. So there we have it, my backup strategy. It may not be the solution for you. And as I said, I'd be happy to hear from anyone who sees any major gaps in my plan. One downside is obviously a cupboard full of unenclosed drives. And you have to be careful not to damage the exposed printed circuit board and motor contacts. And of course, you have to keep track of them all. Mount and unmount them. But these minor inconveniences I can live with. In fact, to me, they seem pretty inconsequential compared to <laughs> maintaining a complex NAS system that's always online. Rationalizing in terms of price, I haven't done an exact comparison, but I'm confident that my system is fairly economic. Large capacity SATA drives, depending on how many you need, aren't cheap either way. So costs mount up here, whatever your choice. But remember, since um, as we have established, I think, any RAID based system is not a backup. You need a clone of whatever system you choose anyway. That's quite an investment right there. I recall estimating 
a minimum of $8,000 Canadian for a fully backed up NAS system. So how much did my backup system cost? Well, omitting the SSD and backup disks for Lightroom, which I've already discussed, and uh, monthly costs for cloud storage, the rest of the hardware here is currently priced as follows. The main backup 18 terabyte G drive costs around $500 uh, last year. There is a newer G drive Pro Thunderbolt 3 that now costs around $700 US. The Pegasus R4 <laughs> RAID was about $1,200 Canadian when I bought it, along with a late 2012 iMac. Two of the original one terabyte drives are still functioning, <laughs> but you can see why that's backed up with a four terabyte Seagate Barracuda drive, costs around $70 US. The 10 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf NAS grade drive that I used to back up the partition on the G drive, that comes in at around $200 US. The Sabrent Dual Bay docking station was very reasonable at $60 Canadian or $44 US. Obviously, most of the expense in any backup system resides in the drives. And the bigger the capacity, the more expensive they are. Depending on your stress tolerance, you should budget for at least one more clone of everything for off-site storage. So the bare bones system here comes in at around $1,000 US. I'm not counting uh, my old RAID enclosure and its drives, nor the clone drives in my cupboard and off-site. Um, I think you could add another $1,000 there. And again, emitting monthly fees for cloud storage. Certainly more economical than a cloned RAID NAS storage, and you'd still need to account for redundant cloud storage in that case as well. I'll add links in the description for some of the items that I've discussed here. Some of them are affiliate links, so if you do buy via those, I get a small commission at no extra cost to you. So this is uh, my life's work contained here in spanning over five decades, so I do take backup kind of seriously. Besides the thing we're dealing with here, loss through theft, data corruption, or some other kind of disaster, digital decay is a real thing. Those zeros and ones are not permanent. Really, the best way to back up your work in the case of photos is to commit it to paper and distribute them as widely as possible to family and friends. Uh, ideally, sell prints and get your work out of digital storage and onto paper and hanging on walls far and wide. If you found this video useful, please do give it the old thumbs up. It does prompt the algorithm to share it more widely. And if this is your first visit to my channel, please do consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell to be alerted to new content. In the meantime, take care. Cheers. We'll see you later.